Thank you for joining us again on TVC Breakfast Saturday. So, justices of the Supreme Court in Abuja upheld the elections of Abba Yusuf as governor of uh, Kano State, Caleb Muftwang of Plateau State as well. You know, the Apex Court reversed the decisions of the Court of Appeal as well as the governorship election petitions tribunal which had sacked them. And other governors who also got the nod of the Supreme Court are governors of Lagos State, Babajide Songwulu, Bauchi State's Bala Mohammed, as well as Francis Nwufuru of Ebonyi State. Other governors uh, who are jubilating at the moment include the governors of Samfara State, Dauda Lawal, Alex Oti of Abia State, and Basi Otu of Cross River State. We have details in this report. This was a situation on the street of Kano immediately after the Supreme Court judgment in Abuja. Earlier, Justice John Okoro, who read the lead judgment, said the Court of Appeal was wrong in affirming the decision of the tribunal, which held that Mr. Yusuf did not win the majority of the lawful votes cast in the governorship election on the 18th of March 2023. In the judgment, Justice Okoro held that the tribunal was wrong in deducting 165,616 votes accrued to Mr. Yusuf in the election on the grounds that the ballot papers were not signed and stamped by officials of INEC. <laughs> also, the Supreme Court affirmed Babajide Sonwolu's election as governor of Lagos State. The court dismissed the appeal of Badebo Road's rival of the Labour Party against the election of Governor Sonwolu. The Apex Court also affirmed the judgment of the Court of Appeal Lagos dismissing the appeal for lacking in merit. Shortly after the judgment, this is what the former governor of Lagos State had to say. Um, when you, usually, when you have concurrent findings at the trial and appellate court, uh, it's a rarity for the Supreme Court to depart from those conclusions. So congratulations to our governor, congratulations to our party, and to our government and so uh, there will be no more distractions to governance now running at full pace. <laughs> Bala Mohammed of the People's Democratic Party has been affirmed as the governor of Bauchi State. The Apex Court affirmed the decision of the Court of Appeal and dismissed the appeal by Sadiq Abaka of the All Progressives Congress for lacking in merit. <laughs> The election of Francis Nwufuru of the All Progressives Congress as governor of Ebony State has been affirmed by the Supreme Court. The Apex Court affirmed the decision of the Court of Appeal Lagos dismissing the appeal of Chukuba Odi of the People's Democratic Party for lacking in merit. Uh, and thank my legal team and the All Progressive Congress and the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, especially. Let me take the courts. On the appeal by the governor of Plateau State, the Supreme Court reversed the sack of Caleb Muthwang, affirming him as governor. Just few minutes after the judgment, the street of just became lively again as residents jubilated freely, awaiting the return of the governor from Abuja. But this is what the governor said shortly after the judgment. <laughs> I want to thank their lordships who have today restored confidence in the judiciary. Their lordships have demonstrated courage and they have raised the hope of the ordinary man in Nigeria that justice is still available in Nigeria. The Supreme Court also affirmed the election of Dauda Lawal of the People's Democratic Party as Zamfara governor. The Apex Court set aside the decision of the Court of Appeal Abuja, which declared the governorship election in Zamfara State as inconclusive and ordered a rerun in three local government areas of the state. Uh, Zamfara people are happy and we're grateful. We will now go back, settle down and do the needful in terms of governance. With the judgments delivered today, it is believed that the governors will now focus on development 
and delivering good leadership in their respective states. And that, that's what we'll be talking about because, of course, um, there's been so many reactions. And now let's get the reaction out, uh, of uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. We have in the studio with us Dr. Adekunle Ojo, SAN. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you at, so much. At, happy to be with you this morning. Happy to see you Thank and you. a happy new year. Thank you. Same to you. All right. So out of these eight states that had, um, you know, these crucial judgments delivered at the Apex Court on Friday, two stood out the case of um, Cano and, and Plateau states and now the Supreme Court has spoken the dust hopefully has has settled now and it's been jub jubilation at least from the camps of um, you know the governors whose elections were fair are firm but looking at the reasons behind affirming their elections how do, did this judgment meet you well, well, well in all fairness with you I have always I'm one of those who believe that the Supreme Court is a policy decision-making court. Whatever is decided as the Supreme Court, we are bound by it, and it's Absolutely. bound to be followed Absolutely. by every other court. So, uh, you, know, you know, basically a scenario occurred, like the Kano own, it was an unusual one. Very. This is the first time that we are getting to know that uh, if the ballot boxes were not signed properly, I mean the ballot papers were not signed properly, that is the result, that it won't count. That was the basis upon which well, 65,000 votes were removed That's from it. the right. uh, uh, governor's uh, vote. And apparently, it's a new one. And getting to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court yes, said, one, it was not disputed by INEC. Then you shouldn't make the party to pay for the fault of INEC. So, and this, this, this is a growth. This is a development in our jurisprudence. That's the way I see it. For me, really, it's, neither, it's, it's not about who won and who did not win. It's really about advancing the cause of justice. We now know that, look, whether it is signed or not, for as long as it bears the INEC emblem or the logo, then it becomes a, a acceptable. That's a new one. But assuming if the, if the speaker had gone the other way, then we'll be saying something else now. On a, on a lighter note at, at the moment, because I, I want you to relax and enjoy this right. morning. Right. It, it seems that all the governors, the eight of them, we are aware about this particular judgment. They were present in courts. You will agree with me. Well, it's the right of it. it it's, is, it's their right. Yeah, yeah. It's but, the, it's, but, but one thing that is very <laughs> crucial at this time that I want us to look at, quoting Justice uh, John Okoro, that yeah. judges should be meticulous in doing their jobs to yeah. avoid the mess that happened in the lower court. Is this not it? I think this was given yeah. well, in, in the Plato case. In the case, case yeah. of in the Kano, in the case yeah. of Kano yeah. are you not worried about some of the judgment? that emanated from the appeal court now being upturned at the Supreme Court? No, no, I, I'm not disappointed about what happened in Kano. Like I said earlier, it's a fresh one. It's a, no, it's a novel position. It has not happened before. So apparently it's been decided now. We can stand by that. But then coming to a, a, a plateau, in all fairness, I think some people have been wronged unfortunately wrong, because we all know that when you have a pre-election matter, mm. it can only be within the party circle. It is not for an outsider to dispute. APC has no basis challenging how the primaries of PDP was conducted. That's the truth. So it is the parties. If, if we do participate in a primary election, then how come you are alleging that it was wrongly conducted? that somebody was not qualified on basis of how the, the, the nominations were done. I think it's a party issue. But mm -hmm. apparently, if it's a constitutional issue, then you go, oh, maybe you didn't have the necessary uh, uh, requisite um, um, uh, 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 papers to contest. That's a different thing. Like the issue of um, uh, uh, plateau now, pre-election pre matters, just like in the case of... Um, Ashwaju, if you remember so well, somebody opposed that Shetima was not qualified right. on basis of double nomination and all whatnot. And it's no, it's not of, it's not of your business as the PDP as so, right. yes. Does so that I, serve as a judicial yeah, precedent? Yeah, it's a, now, it's a precedent. Future occurrence. Yes, it is. And even before we had this, yes. there are several other cases. Mm. So it's unfortunate that the play two. Uh, House of Representative members, the House of Assembly uh, National members, and senators have to pay. Right. The same thing. That is the basis upon which uh, Lalong 
is a, 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 a senator now. So I think it's pretty unfortunate. And it's unfortunate in the wise that the, the justices, with due respect of the Court of Appeal, did not look at precedent. Otherwise, we, we, we should not have this. And you can imagine the Supreme Court Justice Okoro saying that we, we are sorry this happened. This it's is unfortunate. A mess. It's a mess. That's the bitter truth. But, but the unfortunate can't be corrected. But, but uh, unfortunately, it cannot be corrected. Leonard Silk, but uh, part of the reasons that formed uh, the decision at the lower court, the Court of Appeal, was um, the, the existence of a court order. Um, that said that um, you know elections should have been made. Was it at the ward level mm -hmm. and and all of that? No, it it was an issue of recognizing one ESCO and not recognizing the other. Yeah. Well, like, the Supreme the, Court the, spoke the, on that the, the, and, the, and said it had no business. It yes, had no business. The, if if you remember, you see what, what what they were what they inked upon was the case of the old case of Sankara, the Yaris matter. You know, basically it was pursued by Marafa. Marafa was a member of APC. He went all the way through the High Court to the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court. So at the end of the day, the Supreme Court said, "Yes, you are not qualified because the people your 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 your, your primary was contested. I mean, the the the, the uh, fact, faction that can organize your primary they were not eligible to do it. So that was the basis upon which the Sanfara or the the, the Matawale. That was how Matawale became." governor okay. and all the members of PDP and all whatnot. So assuming this case was pursued mm -hmm. by a member of PDP, it would have been a different thing entirely. Okay. But because APC has no business talking about how the primary okay. of Not PDP was yeah. conducted, that was the basis of the decision of the Supreme Court now. And I think I agree with them. That's the truth. But um, how do we clear the mess that has already... Of course, some uh, people have said this has gone. But, you know... For future occurrence. For future occurrence, well, 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 what well, recommendations well, well, me, would you be making? Let me say, let right. me say, this has gone, quote and unquote. But basically, people will still look. Can we do something about it? Can we? Yes. If 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 you have a judgment, if you have a decision based on some level of misrepresentation, if the law was murdered in between, somebody somewhere can come around and say, look, I want a review. Yes, you can basically come out and say, I want a review of that decision. I'm not saying people should go back to court. But I'm just saying if I were to be in the shoes of okay. the lawyer. So are, are yes. you advising those pl plateau lawmakers and the election that brought in, um, uh, the decision that brought in Lanong, it's, it's about, it can be reviewed? It's about, you're it's, saying? it's about election. If I were to be in their shoes, I would seek for a review. But apparently because, they, because I'm not paid to do that, I'm not paid to do that, so I won't do that. So basically it is for them to elect or what to do and what not to do. But apparently, with what has happened, it has opened another vista. It has opened another avenue for people to say, yes, what can I do? Let them try their best. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what would be the wisdom of that? Because, of course, election petition cycles are, have a beginning and have an end date. Yeah. Will that be a, a problem for anyone who wishes to review? Yeah, yeah. B basically, 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 if, the, 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 if your decision was wrong, for whatever judgment, if your decision, even if what they will get at the end of this, yes, assuming it is within the 180 days, we will have reviewed or we will have done this, that is even uh, comforting enough for you to know that you are not rightly edged out of your position. But let me look at this, uh, let me quote this uh, particular quote coming from um, the former U.S. Attorney General. I'm talking about uh, Robert Jackson saying that we are not final because we are infallible. We are infallible yeah. because we are final. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. some of these decisions made are coming from, these judges or justices are also humans. Yeah. They can uh, make error. Will you, will, will, will you agree with, with me on that? Definitely, they do. So, like any other human being. So, what are the lessons that we need to get from this particular judgment? That well, we well the, the lessons that we need to get is, uh, well, unfortunately, the lessons have always been there for us to learn from. There are times the euphoria of the moment or the thinking takes us away from looking at it. Like I said earlier, like the decision that has just been made by the Supreme Court, they are not entirely new. The only one that appears a bit new was the Kano one because it was a fresh issue. So having said that... Which was covered by yeah, the uh, yeah, new amended, yeah, new, new amended electoral, electoral act, act 2022. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to do is 
let us be a bit patient. Let us not throw, because you see, if you, if you remember so well, like what happened in, in, in River State was exactly the same thing that happened in Sanfara. But the play two situation is a bit different. There was a decision that this faction can hold an election. This cannot, or you should not go ahead mm -hmm. based on judgment of Justice or Motor Show of uh, 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 River State. Apparently, they went ahead. And the court said, everything that you did were void. Mm -hmm. So having said, having said that much, then, then going further, it was decided by some, of, some members of the party that they were going to dispute it. Unfortunately, this was not done in the case of Mutfang, Kileb. So it was another party that did it. I think a lesson for us to, to learn is let us exercise enough patience, enough mm. caution in whatever we are doing. And apparently, too, uh, perhaps we might have to, yes, we crave that based on the Electoral Act that some of the cases should stop at the Court of Appeal. But then we are beginning to see now that perhaps if we had allowed it to go to the, the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court, might be different. That is the only lesson that I think we can learn from. Because it's not about the law. We all know what the law, the Says, situation is. Yes. Right. But, but still on this issue, apologies, Emmanuel, yeah. still on this issue of um, you know, calling for reforms, it, it, it was suggested that, and it is being suggested that, um, you know, Election petition tribunals, even if you want to push it to appeal stages and all that, that we should have, you know, it comprised of um, justices from the High Court, the Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court. And as at the time when this uh, reform, when this um, reform was being called up on, this issue or the Supreme Court had not yet spoken on the issue of Plateau State. But how do you see now? Because we, we, we saw the court giving knocks on the Court of Appeal, right. not just in Plateau State, yeah. but even in other cases it's where there were some, yeah. in the words, in the yeah. mind of the Supreme and Court some aberrations. Of the, some of the lawyers as well. As well. Yeah. But imagine, I, you imagine having made so much effort, so-called effort, and the justice said, this is nonsensical. Not, not nonsensical. <laughs> but in the, in the words, Let's just quickly add this, add so that you can that. answer the question together. Are, are you not worried or yeah. concerned that some of your colleagues in the legal profession don't give the right advice to their clients? Yeah, I'm, I'm, we don't need to pursue this case to the appeal court. Yeah. Let's just end it here. You have lost this election. Go and relax. Yeah. Right. So I, I want you to take the questions, you know, from the issue of where the Supreme Court overrules the Court of Appeal. In this case, now a case as controversial as Plateau yeah. State, and of course on the other um, issue of you know lawyers mm -hmm. and how just how, how just how far mm -hmm. can lawyers go in defending their clients? We're coming to. Let me start from the last question, and my answer to that really is that. For whatever you do, there must be a reward for doing well, and there must be consequences for doing very badly. Absolutely. The position of our uh, rules of uh, professional uh, misconduct, as we speak now, is not good enough. Some of the things that we try here in Nigeria, nobody would do, dare do that in the UK. You took a judgment on the basis of a position that you canvassed, and you go back to that court, and you are canvassing a different position at a later date. Mm. You, you know, just like it happened in the in the Undo state, uh, I mean, in the, uh, 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 the case of um, Atiku Abubakar, the position canvassed by one of the lawyers in a different case that he won. He now turned back to the same court to canvass a different position. Nobody dare do that in the UK. Apparently, he's going to be removed from the road. It does not matter how far you have gone in the profession. And I think we need to get back to that. You canvass A today, and the court say you are right. Tomorrow, you turn around to say, that A that I canvassed, it's no longer. Same case. You, need to, you need to explain how it has changed. So apparently, we, need, we really need to, because and you, know, you imagine like this issue of dual citizenship. In Lagos. It is Lagos. firm. It is clear government. that you, for as long as you have not renounced your citizenship of, uh, your, 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 of birth, your, your, uh, your, being a Nigerian, you are born here in Nigeria, nobody can take it away from you except mm -hmm. you elect not we to be again. See. So you can take whatever you want to take elsewhere for as long as you keep your Nigerian citizenship. So, but you imagine somebody still canvassing that. that. And Section 29 is mm. clear. Very clear about that. You get to the Supreme Court again, what has been decided in Shetima, you are still canvassing it. And I think there are a lot of things that we really need to look at. Then coming to, to the later question, it is neither here nor there. The reforms, as it is, as it is, we are, the, the justices, they are human beings. You can get 11 people to sit on the matter, and the 11 may still be wrong. And you can get five people to sit on the matter, and the five are right. 
I think basically it is about giving some level of um, uh, 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 credit to some of these justices. Before we got to this level, people, there were competing tension almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. In Kano, this was going to happen, mm -hmm. this will happen, and Last whatever, whatever. Example. And look, we, we need to develop, we need to evolve. We need to see democracy as an evolving thing in this part of the world. When, I, when, I, when I'm successful in a case, then that case, the judges are good. But when I am not, the judges the have taken. And if, yes, and I, I want to appreciate one thing in our Supreme Court. They decided their matters without having to wink at the sight of any demagogue. Because if you consider how much pressure coming from all the sides, but they decided in the, in the, in the uh, Naira case, you remember the Naira uh, Cash uh, crunch. Uh, you right. They decided, and so, oh, this is very wonderful. But when they decided, remember in the OB case, in those days, when they decided you are this, people said good. But when they decided against it, people said, but no, we should just have that culture and we should begin to, see, to respect our institutions. A particular headline story this morning said the judiciary, with, with the fallout of the judgment of the Supreme yeah. Court, is trying to restore its integrity. It's not about this. Is that how it, you see it? No, that's not the issue. The integrity has never uh, dwindled at any point. It, it has not been diminished. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of art. It's about how you see it. For somebody like me, the Supreme Court has been an epitome of integrity. The men that occupy that seat, they have so much to do. Like he said, you can make errors. Mm. You can make mistakes. You, nobody is infallible, that's bitter truth. But having said that much, there is no basis for anybody to impeach the integrity of the Supreme Court. What we are craving for is that let there be a judicial attitude. Judicial attitude in that whatever is said by the Supreme Court is followed by everybody. Let us know. Let us have some level of precision. Let, let, uh, uh, can we be able to say yes, because this matter is in court, based on this similar, there are no two facts are always the similar. Then, to a large extent, let us be able to say this is how this court will go. If there must be a deviation, this is the attitude that we are asking for. If the Supreme Court can do it, then we are there. But then about integrity, I don't really, there is nothing but, to but, but, but quickly, when you look at what the Supreme Court has mm -hmm. done so far yeah. in this cycle of election, that attitude of, you know, predicting somewhat, safe predictions of how the Supreme Court will swing, presidential election tribunals, and even and up I until guess, now, yeah. have you been surprised or yes, satisfied? Yes, in all fairness, in all fairness with you, with myself, with the Supreme Court, they have done pretty well. Like I said, the only issue that I consider a bit novel is the issue of Kano. Mm -hmm. Every other one appears to be, look, look you, without facts, you are coming around. Like the case of, um, ja, uh, is it Jando now? I can't okay. remember. Lagos. One of the Lagos. cases, they said, you brought your matter outside the requisite time. Mm -hmm. It has lapsed. That's it enough was, for it. It was, I think the judge said it's, a, it's an academic mm. exercise. Exercise, yes. absolutely. Yes. So at the tribunal, that's as far back as the, at the tribunal. Tribunal state. You went ahead to appeal to the court of appeal. You went ahead to go to the Why are you wasting your time? So, well, is it that some judges uh, or some lawyers don't know this term which says rep ipsa loquito that yeah. fact speaks, speaks for itself. itself? So I think basically, basically we, need to, we need to firm up our rules of uh, conduct. Mm -hmm. We really need to look at it. Is this professional at all? Have you done the right thing? In fact, we should get to a level that clients will start suing lawyers. lawyers. Okay, quickly, quickly, we run out of time, but how do you think Governor Caleb Muftuang is going to work now with um, House of Assembly dominated by the APC? But you know, you know, this is Nigeria, yeah? Mm. For people to cross carpet, it's a very easy thing. And for people to agree with you, to compromise, it's much, much easier. And you don't, don't forget that the executive, the executive, the governor of the state has so much power, oh. so he can make things work. I think basically they will align, they will agree. It happened in Oshun. Everyone did not fall. Mm. Even while Adeleke came in, the majority of the House of um, Assembly members, they were of the APC mm -hmm. sub, and they still had a way of working. And above all, it's about you do your job properly, let me do my properly. So I think uh, it, it, would, it would have problem. He's a lawyer by training. You should be able to get them to work with him. Dr. Adekunle Ojo, we thank you very much. Thank Alene you so, Silk so much. for speaking with us on thank TVC thank Breakfast. So we we really you appreciate your legal insights uh, this morning. Thank you so much. All right, still on to